In the last video, we saw that if we drive at 25 miles per hour to a store two miles away, we get there in 0 0.08 hours. And we asked, how many minutes are there in 0 0.08 hours? In order to answer that question, there's one very important fact we need to remember, and that is the relationship between minutes and hours. Now, if we don't know this off the top of our head, that's fine. We can look it up in a unit conversion table. But probably we know that one hour is 60 minutes. How can we use that to figure out how many minutes are in 0 0.08 hours? One method we can use is called substitution. In this method, we think 0 0.08 hours means 0 0.08 copies of a thing called one hour. But we know that one hour is the same thing as 60 minutes by any other name. So we can take away one hour and replace it by 60 minutes. And now when we do the arithmetic, right, 0 0.08 hours times 60 minutes in every hour, we get 0 0.08 times 60 is 4.8. So the answer to the question, how many minutes in 0 0.08 hours, is 4.8 minutes. And that seems reasonable, right? Driving to the store two miles away, taking about five minutes, that's a reasonable amount of time. So that's one method of converting units. And for very simple conversions like this, this is probably the easiest method. But for more complicated conversions, like we're going to see in later videos, we want a different method. The second method is called using conversion factors. Now, a conversion factor looks like a fraction, but its numerator and denominator are the same quantity represented in different units. So, just using this minutes and hours example, we can write down two different conversion factors. We could say one hour over 60 minutes, or 60 minutes over one hour. Those are two examples of conversion factors. Notice one hour and 60 minutes are different ways of describing the same amount of time. How do we use conversion factors to do unit conversions? We'll multiply by conversion factors so that the unwanted units cancel out leaving the desired units. So let's see that in our example. We started off with 0 0.08 hours. And of course, that goes in the numerator, right? 0 0.08 hours is the same as 0 0.08 hours over one. So in our original unit, we have hours in the numerator, and nothing in the denominator. Our goal is to have an answer in minutes and nothing in the denominator. So when we go to multiply, we want to put hours in the denominator so that it cancels out the hours in the numerator we already have. And we want to put minutes in the numerator 
we put it in the numerator so that it's in the numerator of the result. Notice that the two units that we put here, hours and minutes, measure the same kind of thing, namely time. Whenever we have a conversion factor, of course, the numerator and the denominator are going to measure the same quantity, so they must be measuring the same kind of thing. Okay, and now we think about facts we know about the world. We know that 60 minutes and one hour represent the same amount of time. So we chose these numbers because we know how many minutes to an hour. We see that hours in the numerator and hours in the denominator really do cancel out. And then we multiply the numerators and get 4.8. We multiply the denominators and get 1 times 1 equals 1. We get 4.8 minutes over 1. Okay, let's see another example where we want to convert units. Suppose you buy a roll of wrapping paper. The wrapping paper is a rectangle 28 inches wide and 30 yards long. How many square feet of wrapping paper do you have? Well, you know that the area of a rectangle is its length times its width. So you might be tempted to say the area is the length times the width. But now we use that unit analysis that we talked about in the previous set of videos. This 30 isn't just 30, it's 30 yards. This 28 isn't just 28, it's 28 inches. But we want to know how many square feet do we have. When we multiply inches times yards, we don't get square feet. That equals sign with a line through it means does not equal. Inches times yards does not equal square feet. So what do we do? First we convert L and W to feet. Okay, now you may need to look these conversions up. You can find a good table of unit conversions online or linked in Blackboard. We'll say the length first. That's 30 yards over 1. And now we know that 1 yard equals 3 feet. Again, you can look that up. 1 yard is 3 feet. I want to multiply this by a conversion factor. I want to get rid of yards and I want to end up with feet in my answer. So 1 yard is 3 feet. Yards cancel out and I get 30 times 3 is 90 feet. In my denominator I get 1 times 1 is 1. So just 90 feet. My width, that's 28 inches. Now I want to convert that to feet and get rid of inches. And I know, again, you can look this up, that one foot is 12 inches. That means 12 inches goes in the denominator and one foot goes in the numerator. So inches do indeed cancel out and I'm left with 28 feet over 12. Okay, I do that division, right? 
That horizontal bar can mean division. That's how we want to understand it here. 28 divided by 12. Uh, let's make that a fraction. 7 thirds foot. Now if I were going to actually measure that, I might want to make it into a mixed number. But for the purposes of future arithmetic, we'll just leave it as a fraction. So now my area, length times width, I can go back and plug in my 90 feet. times my 7 thirds of a foot. And when I multiply 90 times 7 thirds, I get 210 square feet. So when we were converting to put into our formula, we converted first so that the units in the formula would work out. Also notice, sometimes when we're converting units, we multiply. Sometimes when we're converting units, we divide. How do you know which is which? See how you need to set up your conversion factor to make the units cancel out properly.